welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. In this course, so far we have studied Ach Sandhi, Hal Sandhi, Visarga Sandhi, Swadi Sandhi. Swadi Sandhi is the latest that we have finished. Now remains one peculiar theme or chapter that is Prakriti Bhava. Prakriti Bhava is not a Sandhi. Let us see what is Prakriti Bhava. But then why is it studied in the Sandhi chapters? Why this is included as the fifth chapter of the Sandhi chapters or Pancha Sandhi Prakarana. The main reason is that this Prakriti Bhava provides a contrastive explanation of the Sandhis. In certain given environments, the sounds do not get modified. They remain in their own form. So along with the rules that let us know when Sandhi is to be done and what Sandhi we should do, it is also equally important to know when Sandhi is not done, which Sandhi is not done. This is precisely what is stated in this particular chapter and that is why Prakriti Bhava is included amongst the Panchasandhi Prakarana. So what is Prakriti Bhava? The word Prakriti Bhava can be explained in this particular manner. Prakritehe Bhavaha. The state of being in one's own form. Prakriti means one's own form. Prakriti also means nature. Prakriti also means original. In this particular context, it means one's own form. What it implies and the term Prakriti Bhava implies is that there are sounds which remain in their own form even when the sounds come in close proximity or samhita. What it also means is that there is no modification as an effect of close proximity, which otherwise happens. And we have seen plenty of examples of such modifications. What it also means then is that there is no sandhi. So Prakriti Bhava, the term indicates that there is no Sandhi. The sounds remain in their own form in given environments and there is no modification, no Sandhi that happens in those peculiar restricted environments. This is stated by the Sutra Pulatap Pragriya Achinityam, which is the main sutra in Prakriti Bhava. Pulatap Pragriya Achinityam. This is 61125. The word Prakritya is continued in this particular sutra. Prakritya means by its own form. So Pulatap Pragriya, this is 1 slash 3 of Pulatap Pragriya. Achi is 7 slash 1 of Ach. So immediately before a vowel, Pluta and Pragriya, they always remain in their own form. Nityam means always or obligatorily. So let me read the meaning of the sutra once again. Immediately before a vowel, that is Achi, Pluta and Pragriya always remain in their own form meaning thereby that they do not result in a modified form. 
दैट मीन्स नो संधि नाइदर एक स्थानिक द्वादेश और द्विस्थानिक एकादेश और एक स्थानिक एकादेश नथिंग डूइंग द साउंड्स रिमेन इन देयर ओन फॉर्म फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए ही कृष्ण अत्र गौश्चरती इन दिस केस कृष्ण विच इज अ प्लुत एंड प्लुत इज शोन विद द नंबर थ्री आफ्टर इट सो कृष्ण एज गॉट अ एज प्लुत फॉलोड बाय अ इन अत्र सो देर इज प्लुत अ प्लस शॉर्ट रस्व अ एंड दे आर इन क्लोज प्रॉक्सिमिटी सो दिस वुड रिजल्ट इन द सवर्ण दीर्घ संधि अदरवाइज एंड देर फर दिस पर्टिक्युलर सूत्र कम्स इन टू प्ले एंड सेज कि दिस इज द एनवायरमेंट फॉर सम अदर सूत्र बट दिस इज अ प्लुत फॉलोड बाय अ वॉवल सो प्लुत रिमेन्स इन इट्स ओन फॉर्म and the other vowel also remains in its own form which means that they do not get modified they do not get substituted by some other sound element you cannot do ehi krishna atragat gaus charati no that's not possible ehi krishna atragaus charati it has to stay like that similarly hari etau in this case long e is followed by a that is ach this is the scope of application of eco yanachi and therefore e would be substituted by y but because this word hari is nominative dual and by the sutra idu de dvivachanam pragriham this long e is termed pragrih and by 61125 लतप प्रग्रिया अचिनित्यम दिस सूत्र अप्लाइज एंड दिस ई रिमेन्स इन इट्स ओन फॉर्म व्हेन अ वॉवल फॉलोज दैट मींस यन सब्स्टिट्यूट डज नॉट टेक प्लेस दिस इज व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लतप प्रग्रिया अचिनित्यम नाउ वी नीड टू नो व्हाट इज अ प्लुत एंड व्हाट इज अ प्रग्रिह इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस सूत्र इन अ better manner so now in this lecture we shall spend time to understand what is a pluta and what is a pragriha here are the sutras which explain what is a pluta the adhikara sutra is vakyasya tehe pluta udatta 8282 then pratyabhivade ashudre 8283 duradhute ch 8284 हई हे प्रयोगे हई हयो एट टू एटी फाइव गुरोरंद्रुतो नंत्यप्येक प्राचा एट टू एटी सिक्स अप्लुतवदुपस्थित सिक्स वन वन ट्वेंटी नाइन एंड ई चक्रवर्मण से सिक्स वन वन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी एंड दीज आर दूत्र ऑफ प्रगृह ईदू दे द्विवचन प्रगृह अदसो मे निपात एक जनांग ओत संबुद्ध शाकल से तबनाशे ऊँ ऊँ ईदू तौ च सप्तम्यर्थे लेट एस स्टडी दीज सूत्र वन बाय वन एंड अंडरस्टैंड वॉट प्लुत एंड प्रग्रीह आर वॉट इज अ प्लुत लेट एस टेक दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट प्लुत इज अ वराइटी ऑफ वॉवल लेंथवाइज डिस्क्राइब्ड टू रिक्वायर थ्री मात्रा टाइम फॉर प्रनाउंसिएशन and this is always shown with number 3 after the vowel grapheme so a a e etc the next question is when is pluta used in sanskrit and the answer given is in this particular sutra vakyasya tehe plutah udattah there are four padas in this particular sutra vakyasya is 6/1 of vakya that is part of tehe is 6/1 of t t means part of the word which begins with the final vowel defined by achontyadi t in the first chapter plutah is 1/1 of pluta this is substitute udattah is udatta vowel this is also a substitute achah continues 
and is present here by the paribhasha achascha and achaha here means in place of. So the sutra means in place of a vowel achaha which is part of the t portion tehe of the sentence vakyasya substitute the pluta vowel which is also udatta plutaha udattaha I repeat in place of a vowel which is part of the t portion of the sentence substitute the pluta vowel which is also udatta with an additional property. So if you have brute plus agnichit this is a sentence brute plus agnichit because there is one tinganta namely brute and the other word is agnichit. Now the t part of this sentence is the t part of the final word and that t part is id. Agnichit has got three vowels one a uh, and two e's and the final e is in chi. So starting from this e up to the end of agnichit that is id this is the t portion. e is part of this t portion. So this e is substituted by a plut as well as udat e. This is what is shown in this example. So in the word agnichit a is marked with a horizontal bar, gni is marked with a horizontal bar indicating that they are anudattas and chi is not marked indicating that it is an udatta vowel. This is how we show udattas when we follow the Rigvedic system of showing and marking accents or swaras. And then you have devadatta iha. So devadatta has got the final vowel a uh, and that is udatta followed by iha. So there is no sandhi. That happens over here. Plutap pargriha achi nityam. So this final vowel which is of t becomes pluta and it is also an udatta. Now this is an adhikara sutra that means it governs a particular set of sutras which follow. Let us study them one by one. Pratyabhivade ashudre this is 8283. So Pratyabhivada is a reply salutation. Somebody salutes you and you reply by the salutation that is Pratyabhivada. Ashudre in the case of other than Shudra. Vakyasya is 6 slash 1 of Vakya part of Tehe is 6 slash 1 of T part of the word which begins with the final vowel Plutaha and Udattaha. So Achaha also is present. So the sutra means in the sense of a reply salutation in the case of other than the Shudra in place of a vowel which is part of the T portion of the sentence substitute the Plutha vowel which is also Udatta. I repeat in the sense of a reply salutation in the case of other than the Shudra in place of a vowel which is part of the T portion of the sentence substitute the Plutha vowel which is also Udatta. So first of all we have a case of Abhivada in which Devadatta is saluting his teacher and saying that I am Devadatta saluting you. Abhivada ye Devadatto ham. Now in reply the teacher says Ayushma nedhi Devadatta. So this is reply salutation in which the teacher is wishing or wishing the student well being. And in this case the word Devadatta is prolated, is uttered as Plutta. That's why there is number 3 written after the final vowel and to mark that this is a Plutta. However, there is no Sandhi that is possible. So this is what is Pratyabhivade Ashudre. Then we have Duradhutecha. This sutra has got three padas, Durat and Hute and Cha. Durat means from afar. Hute is 7 slash 1 of Hute 
in the sense of an address. Vakyasya, Tehe, Plutaha and Achaha all these continue. There is a Vartika on this particular Sutra which says Ekashruti Rishyate that means there is no need for any Udatta vowel. Just the Pluta would do because then here you are addressing somebody from far afar. So you are actually calling somebody and in doing that the final vowel in the sentence gets prolated. So if you have when so the meaning of the sutra is this when addressed from afar in place of a vowel which is part of the t portion of the sentence substitute the pluta vowel which is also pluta vowel. So for example saktun piva devadatta in this particular sentence devadatta comes at the end of the sentence the final vowel is a after t and that is the reason why this is part of t and that is why it is prolated. So you have saktun piva devadatta and this second sentence is immediately followed by the next sentence iha and it has got e at the beginning. Now this plutha vowel and this e you cannot do any sandhi in them because this plutha vowel is stated to remain in its own form. Saktun piva devadatta. Next sutra is haihe prayoge hai hayoho. 8 to 85. This sutra has got two padas, haihe prayoge and hai hayo. Haihe prayoge means in the use of the words hai and he, and hai hayoho means in place of hai and he. Durat and hute are the words which continue. Vakyasya, plutaha, achaha, these also continue. So, the meaning of the sutra is in the sense of an address from far afar when the words hai and he are used in the sentence only their vowel is substituted by a plut and not that of a t of the sentence. I repeat in the sense of an address from afar when the words hai and he are used in the sentence only their vowel is substituted by a plutha vowel. So if we have he, he followed by achuta, so he is prolated and achuta has got a at the beginning. So one cannot apply engak padantadati over here and substitute the purva rupa in place of both. This is not possible. Hai he prayoge hai hayoho states that he is a plutha and plutha pragraiha achinityam says that he and a they both stand by their own form. Similarly, if you have Rama hai iha and hai is a plutha and this plutha is followed by e, so echoyavayavaha is the has the scope of application but echoyavayavaha does not apply here hai and e these two sounds they remain in their own form unmodified prakriti this is what is prakriti bhava the next sutra is guru randruto nantyasya pekaikasya pracham 8 to 86 this sutra has got the following padas guru anrutaha anantyasya api Ekaikasya and Pracham. Six Padas, Guruho, six one of Guru, Anrutaha is six one of Anruta in place of a vowel other than Ru. Anantyasya is non final, Api is as well, Ekaikasya of each one by one and pracham is in view of the eastern grammarians. The words durad and hute are continued. So they mean in the sense of an address from afar 
and Vakyasya, Plutaha and Achaha, they continue. So the meaning of the Sutra is, in view of Eastern grammarians, when addressed from afar, in place of a vowel, which is part of the word which is non-final and which is other than ru, substitute the Plutha vowel one by one. I repeat, in view of Eastern grammarians, when addressed from afar, in place of a guru vowel, heavy vowel, which is part of the word, which is non-final and which is other than ru, substitute the Plutha vowel one by one. So, guru is defined as dirgham ch, any long vowel is guru or any short vowel which is followed by a sanyoga, two consonants and the previous short vowel becomes guru and so we have de which is a long vowel which is a guru and then the this is also a long vowel because it is followed by immediately by two takaras so this a in the is also a guru and so we have two cases devadatta in which de is prolated devadatta or devadatta in both these cases the sutra guru randruto rantyasya pekaikasya pracham applies and prolates the vowel and in the final case devadatta the final vowel is prolated as well and then this prolated vowel when followed by e remains in its own form does not get modified so this is what is prakriti bhava the next sutra is aplutavad upasthite 61129 aplutavat means like a non plutha vowel and upasthite is 7 slash 1 of upasthita which means iti which is a non vedic word this is a technical term upasthita means a non vedic iti notably the iti available in the pada pata. so the meaning of the sutra is this immediately before a non vedic iti a plutha acts like a non plutha vowel so if iti follows then there is scope that a plutha vowel behaves like a non plutha vowel meaning thereby that there is modification that is possible so you have sushloka iti where k has got an a which is a plutha and this has got e afterwards and so plutha pragriha achunityam would state that this plutha stands for its own form and does not get modified but this particular sutra says that since the avaidika iti has come immediately after it so this a and e they could be modified and the sandhi can substitute them and that is what happens a plus e and the guna sandhi takes place and so a replaces both of them and we get sushlokethi this is aplutavadupasthite posing an exception in a particular condition namely avaidika iti and finally e chakravarmanasya which says that according to the view of chakravarmana long e is also considered like a non plutha vowel so the meaning of the sutra is in view of the grammarian chakravarmana that is optionally e3 that is e plutha becomes like a non plutha vowel that means sandhi is optionally possible and prakriti bhava is also optionally possible so if we have chinuhi and iti and then chinuhi has got e at the end and then this gets prolated and then you have iti following in this case according to chakravarmana the prakriti bhava is happening as well as the sandhi is also happening so this plutha acts like a non plutha so if it is a non plutha there will be sandhi that will happening will be happening and if it is a plutha 
there will be prakriti bhava that will be the result so you have chinuhi iti as one option and chinuhi iti as the other option similarly chinuhi plus idam and chinuhi dam these are the two options available after having studied what is a prut let us study what is a pragriha the first sutra is idu de dvivachanam pragriham 1111 what it means is the following idu de dvivachanam means eat ut et and dvivachana these are the four constituents dvivachana is a dual suffix and eat stands for long e ud for long u and ed for a so idu de dvivachanam means a dvivachana suffix a dual suffix ending in long e u and a this is what is called pragriha here so the meaning of the sutra is this dual suffix ending in e u and a is termed pragriha here so we have here hari plus etau hari is nominative as well as accusative dual of the word hari followed by etau so this e followed by a this e is called pragriha and so this will not be modified into y following eko yanachi similarly vishnu plus imau vishnu is long u also referring to the 1/2 or 2/2 of the word vishnu and so this is followed by a vowel this is the scope of eko yanachi and but this particular sutra this particular sandhi does not take place because this u is pragriha and plutap pragriha achinityam so this u remains in its own form similarly gange amu here a is followed by a but a is a dual form and that's why it remains in its own form there is no modification no sandhi only prakriti bhava and then we have pachete imau pachete is also a dual form and once again ho yavayavaha will not take place because this a is dual and stated to be pragriha and plutap pragriha achinityam prohibits any modification and remaining in its own form the next sutra is adaso mat this sutra has got two padas adasaha and mat adasaha is 6/1 mat is 5/1 referring to ma eat ut and pragriha are the words which continue so the sutra means long e and long u that come immediately after the sound m in the word adas are termed pragriha i repeat long e and long u that come immediately after the sound m in the word adas are termed pragriha so ramakrishna amu asate this is the example in which amu and asate are in close proximity so amu is the nom- nominative dual of the word adas in masculine gender and so amu plus asate this does not result in the sandhi u and a they remain in their own form why because u is considered pragriha similarly ami ishaha so ami is nominative plural of adas in masculine so ami plus ishaha there is no savarna dirgha sandhi both of them remain by their own form or in their own form the next sutra is she she is a reference to a vedic pratyaya which is added after the pratipadikas particular pratipadikas also stated by panini in one of his sutra supam suluk purva savarna che ya dadya ya jala and so on so the word that ends in the suffix she 
is called pragriha. In fact, the suffix she is termed pragriha. So you have yushme and asme followed by indra brihaspati and still a and e they do not get modified and they remain in their own form. Then we have Nipata Eka Janang 114. This sutra has got three padas Nipataha, Ekaj, and Anang. Nipataha is a cat reference to a category of words. Ekaj means one vowel. Anang means other than Ang. Ang is a Nipata, Ang is a preverb. So the meaning of the sutra is this the one vowel Nipata category words except ang are termed pragriya. I repeat, the one vowel nipata category words except ang are termed pragriya. So for example, e indraha. Here the word e is uttered in the sense of vismaya. Similarly, u umeshaha. U is uttered in the sense of vitarka. A evang nuki manyase. This is part of the emphasis in the sentence and a evam kilatatu here a refers to smarana. However, and, and, and in these cases therefore the ekach nipata e, u, a these are all one vowel nipata category words and so they do not get modified into something else. They remain in their own form. However, in case of a which is not nit, which is a nit, let us say a ushnam, o ushnam, and the meaning is ishat, ishat means little, so little hot, that is warm. So a ushnam, a and u, there sandhi takes place and the guna sandhi happens and we get the output oshnam because this a is not this a is not anang, this a is ang. Then we have oath. The word nipataha continues. Oath stands for vowel o. The sutra means nipata category words ending in o are termed pragriha. I repeat, nipata category words ending in o are termed pragriha. So we have aho ishaha, aho iti, in which o comes at the end of aho and aho, and this o does not get modified even when the vowels come in close proximity. They remain in their own form. The next sutra is Sambuddhau Shakalya Syetavanarshe. This sutra has got four padas, Sambuddhau which is 7 1 of Sambuddhi and Sambuddhi is 1 slash 1 suffix of vocative case and 7 slash 1 here means nimitta or conditioned. So conditioned by Sambuddhi. Shakalyasya means in view of the grammarian Shakalya. Itau is 7 slash 1 of iti immediately before. Anarshe is 7 slash 1 of Anarsha that is non-Vedic. Oath continues, sound O. So now the sutra means sound O which is conditioned by the 1 slash 1 suffix of the vocative case is optionally termed pragriha because Shakalya thinks so, others do not. So optionally termed pragriha when followed immediately by the non-Vedic iti. I repeat, sound o which is conditioned by the one slash one suffix of the vocative case is optionally termed pragriha when followed immediately by the non-Vedic iti. So the original word is Vishnu and when you have the one slash one suffix of the vocative case added to it, Vishnu becomes Vishnu. So this is conditioned by the Sambuddhi suffix. Now Vishnu plus iti. In this case O is termed pragriha and when followed by E and it is optionally 
also getting the modification. So, it is optionally a pragri here. So, you have Vishnu iti as well as Vishnu iti. And once you have Vishnu iti, another optional rule will apply and drop and delete this final verb optionally. So, you will have Vishnu iti as the second option and the third option is Vishnu iti. We will derive these three options. Next, we have the sutra Oyaha 1117. This sutra has got only one word, 6 slash 1 of Oy. Shakalyasya, Itau, and Anarshe continue. So, the sutra means sound U, which is part of Oy, is optionally term pragriha when followed immediately by the non Vedic iti. I repeat, sound U, which is part of Oy is optionally termed pragriha when followed immediately by the non-Vedic iti. And these are the examples, u plus iti. And optionally, u is also substituted by v, so you get viti, or it remains in its own form, and you get u plus iti. The next sutra is o, 1118, which says that in place of this u, as stated by the previous sutra, there are two choices when you have u plus iti, either u plus iti remaining in their own form or u is substituted by v and you have viti and the third option is that this u becomes a long nasal vowel, u. So, the meaning of the sutra is Sound U which is part of OI is optionally termed Pragriha when followed immediately by the non-Vedic Iti and optionally it is substituted by U. Then we have finally Idu Taucha Saptam Myarthe which says that Eat and Oot that is long E and long U when they denote the sense of the locative case then also they are considered to be pragriha. And in the sense of locative case, e and long u are termed pragriha. For example, somo gauri adhishritaha. Here gauri has got long e, which stands for the locative case as well. Similarly, mamaki tanu iti. So tanu stands for the locative case, and then it remains in its own form when followed by another vowel. There is no further substitution that happens. Gauri does not change to Yanadesha Gauriya. It remains in its own form. After having seen the sutras describing what is a Pluta and what is a Pragriya, there are two other sutras not in the context of Pluta and Pragriya which also state that the vowels remain in their own form. And these sutras are these ones, the two ones, Iko Asabarane, Shakalyasya Rashvascha, and also Rutyakaha. Let us study the first sutra, Iko Asabarane, Shakalyasya Rashvascha. This sutra has got five padas, Ikaha, Asabarane, Shakalyasya, and Rasvaha, and Cha. So, Ikaha is one slash three and asavarane qualifies achi. This is brought about by the paribhasha achascha, shakalyasya, rasvaha and cha. Padantaha continues and prakritya also continues. So, the meaning of the sutra is this. In view of the grammarian shakalya, which means optionally, ik appearing at the end of a pada, when followed by a non-homogeneous vowel, remains in its own form and is substituted by a short variety of that vowel. I repeat, in view of the grammarian shakalya, that is optionally, ik appearing at the end of a pada, when followed by a non-homogeneous vowel, asabarane achi, remains in its own form, prakritya, and is substituted by a short variety of that vowel. Rasvascha. 
so we have chakri plus atra where e is immediately followed by a this is the scope of eco energy but initially this sutra says that there is prakriti bhava and this prakriti bhava is accompanied with the shortening of the long vowel so you get chakri plus atra and optionally it says that you can also apply the sandhi so there will be the other form chakriyatra either chakri atra a short vowel or sandhi that is chakriyatra and finally rutyakaha 61128 this sutra has got two padas ruti and akaha ruti is 7/1 of rut short ru and akaha is ak 1/3 so this sutra means in view of the grammarian shakalya that is optionally immediately before the short vowel ru ak at the end of a pada remains in its own form optionally i repeat in view of the grammarian shakalya that is optionally immediately before the short vowel ru ak at the end of a pada remains in its own form optionally here is an example sapta plus rishi we are in a compound and in a compound sapta plus rishi here there is a at the end of sapta followed by ru so this is the scope of application of guna sandhi and the sutra says that optionally this does not happen so you get one option where you have sapta and rishi both vowels remaining in their own form and as a second option there is guna sandhi that takes place and substitutes both a and ru by ar so we have sapt ar and shi that is saptar shi to summarize we have studied the prakriti bhava we studied what is a plata and what is a pragriha and plata pragriha achinityam states that plata and pragriha immediately before a vowel they stand in their own form and do not get modified we also looked at two independent sutras which also talk about prakriti bhava and we come to know that prakriti bhava is a contrast of the sandhi so sandhi can be with reference to prakriti bhava called vikruti bhava that is a modification or substitution prakriti bhava it is very important to remember that prakriti bhava is reported only in between padas as part of the vakya and prakriti bhava is not found as pada internal that is used in the derivation of a pada for example like rama abhyam and so on now we have seen the theoretical explanation of all sandhis and the sutras that bring about these modifications and sandhis now it's time for us at the end of this particular course to take some text and apply this knowledge of the sandhis namely for splitting and also generating to that particular text and this we shall do in the remaining two lectures thank you for your patience